Hi, I'm Seth Perlstein with Cakewalk. Welcome to Sonar Masterclass, Drum Production, Episode 1, featuring Session Drummer 3, Step Sequencer 2.0, and PX64 Percussion Strip. In this masterclass, I'm going to write, arrange, and mix an entire drum part using Sonar's powerful production tools. I'm also going to throw in all kinds of tips, tricks, and workflow enhancements, so keep your eyes and ears open. I'm going to start by opening the synth rack, which is Sonar's hub for managing soft synths. I'll click the synth rack tab to bring it in focus. Then I'll click the insert icon to show the soft synth menu, and I'll choose Session Drummer 3, then show you the insert soft synth options menu. Simple instrument tracks are great for soft synths which only have a stereo output like Rapture or Dimension Pro. But for a multi-out synth like Session Drummer 3, I'm going to choose all synth audio out stereo plus a MIDI source track, and I'll organize those inside of a track folder. Now all of Session Drummer 3's tracks are loaded and ready to go. Next, I'll fit these new tracks to my project by hitting F on my QWERTY keyboard, which is a favorite keyboard shortcut of mine. Next, I'm going to set up proper gain staging for Session Drummer 3. It may not seem like it, but it's actually super important because you don't want to overload the inputs for any plugins you might put on those tracks. To do this, I'm going to want to group all my tracks, so I'll click the Quick Group button in the top left corner of my track folder to put all of its tracks in a group. Now all I've got to do is turn down input trim on one track, and they all turn down at the same time. And one more click on that folder's quick group button, and now the tracks are ungrouped. Now I'm going to break down for you the interface of Session Drummer 3. It's made up of two main pages, the drum kit page, which you can see now, and the mixer page, which we're going to talk about in just a little bit. My favorite part of the drum kit page is, well, the drum kit. You can see it's modeled after a real drum kit. It's even got an electronic kit piece in the corner, as well as a realistic carpet, hardwood floor, and acoustic padding on the wall. To the bottom right of our drum kit is Session Drummer 3's pattern bank. It's made up of eight patterns, A through H, with a transport, so you can play back patterns right from the synth. To the left of the pattern bank are the program browsers. From here, I can launch the main program browser to load kits, or I can load MIDI patterns or individual kit pieces. Now I think it's time to demo some drum kits for you, so I'll click on New Program to launch the program browser. Session Drummer 3 ships with a lot of drum kits, including those by Smart Loops, Sonic Reality, and Steven Slate Drums. We've also made some of our own drum kits and added that to the pile. And we've included a bunch of Rhythm Machine kits, which we sampled from the real classic instruments back at Roland's headquarters in Hamamatsu, Japan. You can bet these samples sound super tight. But we're going to focus on acoustic drums for this demo, so let's check out some of the Stephen Slate kits first. In case you don't know, Stephen Slate is a maniac when it comes to multi-sampled drum kits. He models them after drum kits from famous recordings by famous musicians, and we've got one of my favorites right here in Session Drummer 3, the old Zep kit. If you need a big, fat, larger-than-life acoustic kit, then this is it. Another dope kit from Steven Slate Drums is the Sizzle Kit. Not quite as big, but packing more punch, this kit is sure to please those who are into hard rock and heavy metal. And being close to 500 megs in size, both Steven Slate kits have a lot of velocity layers. That's a great start to Session Drummer's library, and the Sonic Reality kits don't disappoint either. First, I'll play for you the Ring Beats kit, which weighs in at around 200 megs of samples and is of course made to sound like the kit of a certain famous British drummer. Nothing like that vintage British rock drum sound. Next, I'll load up the Gretsch kit and give that a whirl. This kit also uses about 200 megs of samples. Finally, I'm going to load up the Motown kit, which I'll be working on for the rest of the project. This kit is nice and punchy and has sort of a dry studio tone to it.
There's something about the tone of the Motown kit that I just absolutely love. But before I get into writing a track with the Motown kit, I want to show you guys Session Drummer's mixer page. At the top of the page are velocity sensitive preview pads. I can click low on the drum to hear a soft hit or high on the drum to hear a loud hit. That's pretty cool. Below the preview pads are the width controls. And you guessed it, I can control the stereo width of my kit piece. Check out how the snare becomes narrow and goes back to sounding wide. Below the width controls are the tuning controls. And I can retune and detune each kit piece by any number of semitones I want up to and including 24, which is two octaves for those of you keeping score at home. Below the tune knobs are the solo and mute buttons. And of course there are the pan controls and volume controls. So remember earlier in the video when I loaded up all those audio tracks for Session Drummer? Now I'm gonna route each kit piece to its own virtual output so that they're on separate tracks in Sonar. To show you what I'm talking about, check out how when I play my drum kit, everything goes through one audio track. Now I'll show you how to do the routing. You can click on the triangle next to that number one to bring up the drop down menu and click on a number to choose any of the 12 available outputs. Or in case one way of doing things isn't enough, you can left click or right click on the number itself to cycle through the available outputs one at a time. So I think I'll leave my kick on output one. I'm gonna route my snare to output two, my hi-hat to three. I like to group my toms to four, but you can route them individually. And I'll group my cymbals to five, but you could certainly route those individually too. And since because there's no percussion in this demo, I'll just leave those at one and I won't have to worry about them. So now when I play my drum kit, each piece will be on its own audio track and sonar. Check it out. So that was kind of a lot of work to do all that actually. Thankfully, Sonar has a really cool feature which will allow us to save this and recall it at any time. And that feature, my friends, is called a track template, which is basically like a preset for a track, including those that are routed to soft synths. So I'm gonna right click in one of my tracks, choose save as track template, open my Session Drummer 3 track template folder, type in a name for the template, I think I'll call it Motown Kit Multi Out, and I'll click save and there it is. All the routing, including the drum kit and soft synth are saved. Now if I wanna recall that at any time, I can right click in any track, choose insert from track template, scroll through the menu system and there it is, there's the kit we just saved. 